Surgeons literally hold people's lives in their hands. Every movement and decision they make could have life or death consequences. Being precise under severe stress is extremely important. So what kind of person would be suited to this pressurized profession? I'm here in the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland to see if I might just have what it takes. Professor Oscar Trainer is director of the National Surgical Training Centre at the ICSI. Surgical training must have changed quite a lot in the last while. A lot of the theoretical basis for what we're learning is done through technology, through uh, e-learning programs, through uh, apps for the smartphone, and we're moving away from classroom training. Also, we're doing a lot of the skills training in skills laboratories. So the trainees work with simulators and bench models and computer assisted models and they can practice until they know how to do the skill without exposing patients to any risk whatsoever. Today, Professor Trainer's team will be putting me through my paces to determine whether I would be naturally suited for the operating theatre. But before they'll let me get my hands on a scalpel, the first thing I'll have to do today is undergo an emotional intelligence test. How much is each feeling below expressed by this picture? <laughs> I have no idea. Performance is really all about emotions as well as your knowledge and your technical skills. So our trainees are put through their paces in simulated situations. We simulate crises and we train them how to manage those. We have them uh, practicing their skills uh, with simulated patients and, and relatives. Um, and they, they get a lot of intensive training in this. Ireland's really ahead of the game in this, isn't that right? Oh, we are, definitely. So we run 21 full day training workshops for our trainees. To our knowledge, there is no other surgical training college that does that in the world. Training for emotional intelligence is an emerging field, but one of the more traditional skills of a surgeon is the ability to work well with their hands, and during teaching, it can be hugely valuable to understand the way surgeons' hands actually move when they're operating on a patient. One of the newest pieces of technology available is this sensor glove, which was developed specifically for RCSI at Tyndall National Institute in Cork. And at Tyndall we designed this uh, flexible sensorized uh, hand that contains accelerometers, which you can see on each of the, the digits on the, on the hand, and that tracks the movement of the hands. And then you have bend sensors, which are on the, underneath, and that tracks the, the bend. And then you have force sensors, which also tracks the force. And they're all built into the flexible electronics here. Those accelerometers you're talking about, we're finding them in everyday things now, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. They're in your iPhone, your Wii. Uh, they track the motion and movement uh, that you use when you use these devices. Paul Neary is Professor of Surgery and Head of Surgical Simulation Research in the RCSI, and he's been working closely with Tyndall on the development of the glove. This glove can track everything, so if you do that with your hand, move the fingers, the computer can detect every joint movement, how quickly you move it, and where it is in 3D space. Wow. So even though it looks quite basic, there's a huge amount of technology behind it. So what we're going to do is get you to do a simple stitch. Okay. okay? Yeah, really here you go, and out. And why, why do we need to track these sort of movements at all? What can that tell us? Well, ultimately, if you want to set standards in training and you want to measure what it takes to put an effective stitch in, you want to be able to map the movements. And you can translate this right up along all different industries. So when somebody's using a new surgical instrument, by using this technology, you can tell how efficient it is, how easy it is, how ergonomic it is. Right. So there's a huge potential for this glove. And there's nothing else in, in the world like this at the moment, is there not? We are way ahead of everybody on the planet with this technology. And in its development, we will set standards for surgery across the globe. It's a very exciting thing. So finally, it looks as though I'm going to get a chance to test my potential skills on the surgical simulation tool. Over 400 trainees come here during the year. So we teach them basic skills right up to more technical skills so that when they go into the live environment with the patient, they have a basic skill set. So this is our GI mentor. This is a, a gastroscope. It does gastroscopy through the mouth of the patient, head of the patient here. This is very high fidelity, and you could train people up to almost uh, live patient levels with this. And wow. These are the controls. They have uh, two dials here, which is up and down, left and right. Okay. That's the oh. uh, vocal, vocal cords. And you can see if you're going down the wrong area, you cause trouble for the patient. Oh so you slip in behind down into the esophagus ah. and you slide right down, lower esophagus, 
and then you're into the stomach itself. And so you're looking at things like ulcers or bleeding points or tumours. And you'd see these, so you'd see problems here or across they, the lining sometimes. Absolutely, they would identify all that. Right. So you're going to try it. Right. Push away. Just. God, it's tricky, isn't it? And you can see the pain hey. score as you're inflicting pain on the patient. I'm choking him to death. I was going to say it's like driving a car, but it's actually nothing like driving a car. Well, if you drive like that, we have a problem. <laughs> This is our, our uh, simulator for more advanced procedures. This one is set up to do a gallbladder. What you do with this is you grab in the gallbladder, which is this structure, and you're gently going to tease off the fat off the uh, ducts of the gallbladder here. So I'm gonna give you a go. Okay. Okay, there you go. Okay, oh, what am I doing there? No, you're okay. Stay there. You know, this is not an easy operation for, for no. our early trainees. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, the, the red is the bleeding you're generating. Yeah. So we try and avoid that in surgery usually. That red stuff is not good. The red stuff's not good, Jonathan. Oh. This is not a good place to travel. Oh, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, whoa, what is, what is that? That's the main thing that you do not want to damage in surgery of this type. Uh. So, so this would be a real red flag to us that you would need remedial training. <laughs> right. All of the data from my testing has been processed and now it's time to find out if I would have any chance of making it as a surgeon. I have to say, I'm not feeling all that confident. Oscar. So, Jonathan, your psychomotor skills, your basic hand-eye coordination is quite good. Okay. Um, but your visuospatial ability is sort of on the lower range of normal. <laughs> the good news is your emotional intelligence tests uh, show surprisingly that you're <laughs> self-confident and extrovert, uh, which you might expect. Yeah. And so I think that this facilitates good decision making right. and good interaction with other team members. So you're saying there's a chance? Um, well, just don't give up the day job just yet. <laughs>